What's up guys? Welcome back to Supreme Micah. So in this upload, what I want to talk about is the paleo diet. Now in this overall diet, I must say that it does seem to be tough. Now in regards to other diets, such as a keto diet or a vegan diet, I think that those particular diets may be a lot more difficult. It's a little bit difficult to be able to find all of the ingredients properly or likely to actually consider that a vegan meal plan or overall lifestyle. And in regards to a keto diet, I believe a keto diet is extremely difficult. I would say that this diet, of course, it being something that consists of eating whole foods overall, I think that it may be a lot easier compared to some of the other meal plans. Now, I've spoken to people personally, and there are many who would say, well, I tried to do vegan and I couldn't do it. So it's just one example of probably many where you may say, well, a vegan diet is likely difficult, and you may have people who say that it's easy. So those are opinions. So I just want to let you guys know that in regards to the content that we're about to speak about, we're going to get into exactly what consists of a paleo diet, also the foods that you need to eat. And I already mentioned that you need to focus on whole foods. Now, continuing on, it's also very healthier or healthy for you to be able to actually consist of this diet. Now, just for some background information in relation to this particular diet, overall, it's something that people used to do thousands or even maybe millions of years ago, and I'm not really going to get into precisely exactly what time, but it really is something that at that point of time in the world, there wasn't a lot of processed foods and a lot of the foods that people were preparing were natural. When you're putting this diet in your lifestyle, you have to focus on being able to eat things that are more natural. So in regards to beef, for an example, you would have to technically eat beef grass-fed. I've been able to try grass-fed beef before and it's actually very good and I can tell the difference between something that is not grass-fed. Now in regards to the fat content, there are cuts of ground beef or types of ground beef that does have a lower percentage of actual fat. So you may see things that 85% versus something that might be 93%. So in regards to those different types of beef, it might vary, but overall, I think that if you are attempting to try this diet, likely you would enjoy eating beef that was grass-fed. Now, in regards to foods, I mentioned whole foods. So these are things like beans and chicken and fish, and it goes a lot into how this food is prepared too. I know I mentioned not processed, but it goes a lot more behind that. So in regards to actual whole foods, the preparation of the food. So I'm not saying, well, okay, well you can eat beef, okay, and you can eat chicken and you can eat fish. It's how it's prepared. So make sure that these foods are still keeping a great amount of nutrient. I'm not saying go deep fry your fish or go deep fry your chicken breasts because that's going to be literally beside the point of following this diet. Now, I'm going back to something that I had mentioned earlier about this diet possibly being a lot easier than other diets. Now, the hardest part about this is likely some of the things that you have to do in regards to this being consistent on an actual paleo diet. Things that you cannot eat on these particular diets is sugar. And uh, we already mentioned processed foods. You have to stay away from grains, okay? And that is just to name a few. So people who typically have cheat days, 
Now, in regards to this diet, that might be something that you will likely have to completely get rid of. It probably depends on your overall plan. Some of these plans have definitely changed over the last few years. There are definitely different type of diets that you can do in regards to this one in particular. For some reason, do you have sugar in your diet? Whatever you're attempting to achieve that you might want to just rethink that if you're following this diet and for some reason you're having those things incorporated in your diet maybe you're not following the actual diet maybe there's a different diet that may fit you a lot more and the reason why I'm saying that is because you're not going to reap the entire benefits of actually following this diet this diet overall is very helpful in regards to your health and also building lean muscle so this is the next topic that I want to get into in regards to how does this affect your overall muscle. Now, can you gain muscle from this diet? Absolutely, you can. Now, this is something that you have to keep in mind, okay? This particular diet is different in regards to a keto diet and also a vegan diet because you can eat, I would say, normal foods it's more of removing a lot of different foods that may be incorporated in different foods. And you can say that about being a vegan and also having a keto diet lifestyle too. But I think that this is a lot easier because you can consistently eat throughout the day. Unlike being a vegan, I think, oh, well, is this vegan or is that vegan? And it's almost being picky. Unless you're going to somewhere that is solely based on you shopping at a, a vegan store where everything there is vegan. And a keto diet, I think, is extremely difficult. And a lot of the things in regards to that really focuses on being able to burn fat and become in a ketogenic actual phase. The keto diet is difficult because the portion size of exactly what it is that you're eating in regards to fat, protein, and carbs has to be extremely strict. That's the most difficult part probably about the keto diet is the amount of carbs, proteins, and calories that you actually have to consume because you have to keep it at a specific level to be able to reach that ketogenous actual phase. If you're not actually following that plan, what happens is you're not going to actually go into that ketogenic actual phase. So when people follow a keto diet, what tends to happen is they burn a lot of fat. That is a lot of the reasonings of why people do the keto diet. The keto diet is very popular, especially here in the States and probably other places too. I would say that a lot more people probably would do a keto diet in phases, like doing a keto diet on a daily basis for 365 days probably isn't suitable for some people versus some people may want to do it maybe two or three times out of the year for maybe a month or two weeks. So whatever best suits you. Now, when you compare that to, let's say, this particular diet, the paleo diet, right? This diet, you can still eat consistently throughout the day. It's just that you can't eat a lot of foods that you probably are used to. So you also have to make sure that what you're shopping for is more natural and that it's not raised in a certain way. A lot of foods out there nowadays when you go to the grocery store have different methods of raising chicken and beef. So these are things that you want to make sure that you can limit within your body. So getting back to how this actually supports your overall muscle growth. So when you're attempting to actually build lean muscle, being able to have this particular diet around you will help with being able to put on too much fat because the types of foods that you're eating isn't actually bad fats. Okay, so a lot of the fats that you get from processed foods, a lot of the fats that you get from eating sugary candy or desserts or drinks, for an example, you're not going to be consuming all of that, right? So a lot of the muscle that you're going to get from high fatty fish, right? A lot of the nutrients that you're going to get from that particular protein source, fish and chicken, yeah, it's going to be high in fat, which is what you need overall for an energy source, but it's a healthier fat. You need fat to be able to actually mobilize and support your body, and you overall do need it for muscle. 
Now, in regards to the specific types of fat, that's a different story and I've done content like that. In regards to what's the difference between several different types of fats, such as trans fat and saturated fat, we're not going to get into that today, but I just wanted to let you know what the difference could be in regards to what you're attempting to achieve in the gym. Something to keep in mind that if you do go to the gym, if you weight lift and you're attempting to build muscle overall and you feel like maybe that you actually put on way too much fat compared to some people, or overall it's just you, then maybe this is a diet that's for you. Maybe this is going to actually help you become a leaner because you're going to be eating less processed foods. There's a lot that goes on behind this and there's a lot to say. There's a lot to argue, but I just wanted to give a general overview and brief description. There are several key factors that I didn't touch, but I'll definitely maybe able to get into that in another video. I also wanted to go over too in regards to the health benefits. Now, you will overall benefit from eating whole foods and following this diet because not consuming those processed foods and fats that are horrible for you and desserts, sugar, those specific type of substances and foods, you can likely benefit from not eating that over a course of time. You'll be able to feel a lot better. You'll have a lot more energy. Being able to prevent actual heart disease, for an example, high blood pressure is another example, and reduce several other health complications. Now, I definitely recommend you go speak to a doctor if this is a diet that you particularly want to do. I don't suggest anything, but I would say that maybe this is something that you could be interested in. All right. Guys, I have a fitness video that I want you to watch. Okay, so check this out. Guys, as always, I really do appreciate you for tuning into this channel. Make sure that you subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.